All right, hopefully that's the end of the technical difficulties. Um, my apologies for that. So this is where we were, 180 degrees on a straight line. So my question was, uh, what's the question mark there on the, uh, the missing angle? Yeah, how did you get that? Yeah, the whole thing's 180, you used up 40. So we'd have 140 degrees here. Okay, so that's one thing that you're going to end up seeing when we do some of our work today. Um, another thing that you're expected to know about is a vertically opposite angle. Um, and you might be able to just guess it by looking at the picture, but what do you think the question mark is there? 40. Yeah, so you're right about it being 40. Here's why. It's the same picture as before. We know that this is 140 on the other side, and there's a straight line here. So that straight line means 180 degrees. So there'd have to be 40 degrees on the other side of the line. And the two that we're interested in are these two here and here. We call them vertically opposite, and they are always equal. There's two other angles, this one and this one. They would have the same value as well. It would be 140. So when you hear that term vertically opposite, that's the picture you're thinking of. It's kind of like an X that you're looking for. Okay? So uh, you'll see that in the textbook and when you do some of your work that you need to recognize where something is vertically opposite or where a straight line has 180 degrees. Okay, so one thing I'm going to show you here is um, we'll take a look at this where uh, with some software that I have, but let's just start by talking about what the definition is for a transversal. So it basically means it's a line that intersects two or more. So in, in this picture here, the red line is the transversal. So this would be the, uh, the one it's pointing to in red is the transversal. We're going to be specifically interested in parallel lines. So let's start by taking a look at the one, uh, the picture on the right side to see if we can figure out how some of these angles would work. Okay. So um, let's see here. I'm going to bring up, actually I'll give you just a All right, so let's just start with A, B, and C, those three angles at the top. Can anybody <laughs> figure out A, B, or C? Maybe one of those three. So, so you got one then you want to share, Michelle? Just give me one of them. A is 40. Yes. How come A is 40? Um, because it's a straight line. Yeah, so the straight line here has to add up to 180. That's how we know that A is 40. Um, somebody else, do you have uh, B or C? Sure, James. Is B? How'd you know? Yeah, so that's a great uh, vertically opposite. These two here are vertically opposite. You could also argue that it's on a straight line. I'll draw the line in black. Whoops, that's a terrible line. So there'd be 180 degrees along that line as well. Okay, and that leaves us with one more, which is C. What would C be? Somebody at the back there. Sure, France. It is 40, yes. So before we're able to figure out the ones at the bottom there, um, I'll just show you a little picture of what's, what's going on. So if you're, if you're copying notes right now, don't worry, I will come back to the screen in just a second. I just want to show you uh, kind of how this works. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a couple of lines. And I'm also going to make them parallel. So don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to uh, use this software right now, but it is uh, kind of a neat one to tinker with. Yeah, it's called GeoGebra. It's a free, uh, a free one, and this is the online version. All right, so what I got for you here is the, um, I've got the uh, two parallel lines. So I'll click on those just so you can see which ones. That's parallel. 
as is that. And what I want to do is I want to measure an angle here. So I'm going to uh, get this to measure an angle for me. So I'll ask for these three here. And I'll ask for one more angle. Whoops, maybe I missed it. Let me try that again. This one, this one, and this one. Okay, so I don't know how well you can read that from the back. Can you read what those numbers say? Can you read it? Yeah, it's, it's 111.23. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this just so we can see, um, you know, how the uh, lines might change. So if I started to tilt... Okay, so... What I'm going to do is I'll change the uh, angles. I can move these things around. But what I want you to know is the, uh, I want you to take a look at what the angles are in between them. So right now, uh, maybe someone at the front, can you read out uh, what the angles there are? 78.07. Uh, 78.07. And then if I keep moving them around, so now there's 62.17, but the the thing is, if you can't really see it, these measurements, they keep coming up the same. So no matter where I'm putting those lines, those angles keep coming up. Well, right now they're 37.51. They always come up to be the same number. So that's the thing that you need to take from the first start of this, is that um, this is the traversal, okay? And we call these two angles corresponding. So that means one of the angles is, uh, let's go to our picture here for a second. Um, I like to call them an F angle. And I'll show you in the picture why I call it an F angle. So... Yeah, it, you have to use your imagination a little bit, but uh, let's see here. How could I remove? There. Okay, so for this one, um, what have I said? I'll put a couple points on it. So if you look at where, I'll just trace it out with the, uh, the mouse here. This would be the F angle here, like this is an F. And that's what you're trying to find. So in this one, I'll clean this up a bit so we can uh, mark them down. There would be an F angle in here. And the technical word for it is corresponding, OK? So let's, uh, we'll put a little picture in the notes here for corresponding angles. And I should do a better job trying to make my lines straight. So in our picture here, the corresponding angles could be there. Sometimes it doesn't look exactly like a perfect F, though, um, because I could also say the same thing about this side. They're also corresponding. So in this picture, if we can take that idea, we should be able to figure out the uh, angle F, G, D and E, because they correspond with angles at the top, A, B, C, and 140. So how about we start with C? Take a look at angle C here. Can anybody figure out which one corresponds to C? Yeah, G is corresponding. So it would have an angle of 40. 
All right, how about this uh, 140 degrees here? Who corresponds to 140? F, yes, F corresponds to 140. Um, how about uh, D? Who corresponds to D? A. Yeah, so this would be A, and it corresponds here. Okay. So this is uh, 40 degrees as well. And finally then, that leaves us, we would have B and E are corresponding. Okay, so let me show you, uh, I'll use a blank sheet here. I will come back to that if you do need to take your notes some more. But here's what happens. You've got two parallel lines, and you have a traversal that goes between them. So here's the markers that tell us they're parallel. Um, we call this the inside, the area between the parallel, and we have the outside lines here. Uh, yes. <laughs> so here's how you know that you have corresponding angles. For a corresponding angle, it has to have these two things. It has to be on the same side of the traversal. So for example, let's just say we pick the bottom part of this traversal. One has to be inside, one has to be outside. So for example, if I pick this one to be outside, I have to pick this one to be inside. So if you can't find the F in your picture when you're looking for a sort of F angle, then those are some of the rules that will help you to figure out that it's a corresponding angle. It has to be um, on the same side of the traversal. One of those angles has to be on the outside and the other has to be on the inside. So all we're going to do is practice recognizing them, see if we can figure out some of those questions. So I'll give you a minute when you're copying this down, and then we're just going to go back and practice finding the angles themselves. So let's try and find some angles in this uh, picture here. So for example, one thing we want to be able to say is, if we look in the first picture here, so I'm looking at this picture at the top, are A, B, and C, D parallel? You're right that they're not, if that's what you thought, but how can you, how can you prove that they're not? You have to give a reason. Yeah, so that's what we were uh, just using, is we were saying, if they're parallel, these two angles would be the same. But since they're not the same, they're not parallel. So AB is not parallel to CD for the first example. Um, can we come up with angles G and H? Uh, yes. <laughs> Go for it then, James. Take it away from 180. Yeah, so that would be 123 degrees here and 122 degrees here. Okay, let's try, let's try B and see what we come up with here. So first of all, why don't we take a look for G and H, and then we'll try to decide if they're parallel lines or not. So G, can anybody come up with G? Sure, Paul. Excuse me? G, yes. Um, just, just so we're clear, we're looking at B. Sure, Alex. 180 minus 113 is the answer, also known as uh, 67 degrees. All right, um, what about angle H? 
Also 67. How come? We didn't, we didn't, you're right about the F angle, but we didn't know that before I wrote it down because now I know they correspond because they're the same. Right? I didn't know that before I figured it out, but I could figure it out without needing to know that. So how did I figure out H without needing to know that they were corresponding? One eighty minus. It's, it's on a straight line. So here's my straight line with one hundred thirteen degrees. So now that I know this sixty seven, now I can say those two correspond. So because they are the same, these two must be parallel. Okay. So I'm going to have you work on C and D, and I want to come around and see how you're doing. So transfer those pictures down to your notes and work with your neighbor. Okay, so let's take a look. It looks like most people have finished the first one. So can anybody help, uh, help us out here? What's the angle for G in 86? How did you know that? Yeah, they're vertically opposite. That's the, uh, the term you're going to hear. Um, how about H? So 180 degrees minus 94 degrees. That's going to be... So 86 degrees here. So is AB parallel to CD? Yes. Okay, how come? You're correct, how come? They're both the same? What's, it starts with a C, the word I'm looking for. Yeah, they're corresponding angles, okay? So now let's move on to D here. Um, what's the measure of angle G going to be? Yeah. How come? Starts with a V. Yeah, vertically opposite. That's right. Okay, so that's correct. Can we figure out H? Yes. 139 degrees. So is AB parallel to CD? No. How come? Because the angles are not corresponding. Not corresponding, yeah. Corresponding is parallel, not corresponding is not parallel. All right, so that's the end of our first uh, topic. So um, I'm just going to save this video for you guys, and we'll, we'll start the second one.